good evening. Welcome, everyone, to our Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, first thing on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Does everyone have a copy? Move to approve. Uh, Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. The agenda is approved. The approval of the minutes, which I think everyone has received an email. I've had time to look it over. Is, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, next on our agenda is our Kerr Street Marine presentation from members. Well, first of all, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. Good to have um, you. Always a pleasure. I'm, I'm <laughs> bound by a pledge that I made, Amanda Griffin being an Alabama Roll Tide fan. And, uh, yeah. you know, they, Which is correct. Yeah, they, they did. And, uh, it was a very good game against Clemson, but I promised Amanda that uh, if if the Roll Tide somehow pulled out the miracle, which they did, <laughs> that I would wear whatever she wanted me to wear in Alabama colors. So tonight I'm wearing uh, the Bear Bryant hat and, uh, and vest. Of course, next year when uh, Clemson beats Alabama, she will be addressed in, uh, adorned in orange. <laughs> we'll look forward to that. I think that's good. Mr. Willingham, good evening. You missed the explanation of the outfit. Well, I heard you, something about Alabama. You got it. <laughs> Alabama beat Clemson, so that's, a, that's the reason. So with that, I, I have fulfilled my obligation. Yes, I will Thank take you. my hat off. <laughs> <laughs> now, as HR representative, please make sure none of this reflects in your reevaluation. <laughs> <laughs> At your last meeting, we uh, asked you all to do some homework, and we're excited tonight to hear what you're going to bring forward relative to the purchase of the Old Town Marina. On the agenda, it's called the Kerr Street Marina because it's on Kerr Street, but technically the name is the Old Town Marina. I hope that uh, several of you have had the opportunity to come up with some dynamic plans, and we have uh, hopefully most of the hour tonight we will spend on talking about your thoughts as advisors to the city council. I'm not sure what order uh, you know you want to do this in. At the end, I'm sure the staff and I have some thoughts we'd like to share with you too. But uh, I'm not sure, Glenn, if you're up there in television land, uh, whoever you have, or if y'all want to just start at Let's one end and go around we'll the start table. Start with uh, Jim. Come on around, I guess. Is that all right? Thank you, Bill. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Somebody has to walk point, I guess, right? <laughs> uh, I sent an email out with an attachment that uh, had about a dozen questions on it yeah, and uh, some ideas. Those ideas were prior to meeting Susan down there on Friday, actually walking through the uh, uh, facility. Mm -hmm. So I think I can kind of uh, wrap up what I my recommendation would be is to keep the eight boat slips on the far end, on the residential end, the place that's covered right now, which is pretty deteriorated, yeah. uh, my idea is to raise that and put a swimming area down there with a beach, rope it off. And I talked to Pat Donovan Potts. She said the water is good enough to swim in, except after a rain event, and you have to watch it, you know, monitor it for fecal chloroform. Of course, the problem there is it might be subject to periodic closures if the uh, fecal chloroform gets too high. Uh, take quite a bit of prep because there's a lot of glass and stuff on the bottom, but my view would be to take all that out, put a gravel base in, put sand down there, rope it off, and then the boat ramp that's right there, use that for paddleboard, kayak, mm -hmm. yeah. canoe launching. Yeah. And I don't know if uh, we would need a platform like they, did, they have down at Sturgeon City, like is that on Blue Creek that the county put in? Mm -hmm that we've been talking about putting in at Northeast Creek eventually. Um, <clears throat> we use that for the River Rock Palooza every fall to launch canoes and kayaks out there, and it's just fine with the boat ramp without the uh, platform out there. Uh, let's see. Um, the rest of, Susan, you had mentioned on the far side from the entrance to the building, uh, that might be parking. I think that's a good idea to put parking around the back of it. Uh, there'll be a fence put in uh, to kind of separate the general area from where the people have their boat 
rental slips, which I think is a good idea, limit access there. Uh, I think there's probably too much building for my thoughts, but we have canoe, kayak, paddleboard rentals in there, and there's probably some extra space that we could find something to do with. And then my final idea would be some type of a zip line. And I'm not sure the best place to do that, you know, about a year ago, I half, half seriously said, why don't we put a zip line from the water tower and run it? You know, it's probably a little bit over a quarter of a mile, but they've got zip lines at Branson that go a half mile or more. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it'd be nice to have a terminus in the water, but I'm not sure if that's feasible. A what? I'm sorry. A terminus where the zip line that start at the water tower, but where are you going to end up at? Yeah. Um, if not, we could possibly do something because we've got Willingham Park, we've got the Kerr Recreational Area with the ball fields, and we've got this new acquisition all in a big area. There's probably other places to put a zip line in there that uh, might be more feasible in the water tower. So that's kind of a, a summary. I had several other ideas about, you know, flipping it. If we could sell the property for a profit and take the uh, the profit and put it into Jacksonville Landing, but uh, I think uh, with what we paid for it, you know, that would be an idea to turn it into some type of an aquatics center. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. First of all, Susan, I'm sorry I missed Friday. Uh, Friday was not a good day, and but anyhow, I, I really am sorry because I <clears throat> would have enjoyed uh, getting a little more knowledge. Sure. Uh, I want to piggyback a bit on what Jim has already said. Uh, again, as he has already alluded, the only slips that currently seem to be filled are the ones that are down closer to the residential on the far end down there. I think there's only one maybe down at this end that's currently being used. I'll put it that way. I'm not certain as to the condition as he alluded to that that's in a bad, that the rest are in bad shape or not. Mm -hmm. But I like his idea. Uh, I briefly uh, entertained it as well as a swimming area. If you would have to uh, obviously rope it off, clean it up, Etc. But it also also going to involve uh, personnel. Uh, you're going to have to have some uh, either lifeguards or etc. or some type of whatever. <clears throat> Again, his um, canoe kayak rental I think would be an excellent idea. Uh, the only other thing I would add would somewhere. Every time I've been by and I've heard it mentioned several times on the committee about how the little dock area is always full with everybody. And I don't know what we could add with this new area that would add to that. You know, I don't know how far out you could go, um, what direction or what form you, it would take, but that would be, I think, would uh, with the way this has been utilized, uh, might be a good addition to that. Okay. That is, and as he, he's already said as well, that is a pretty good sized piece of property. I mean, you, there's a lot of potential there. Uh, and again, uh, maybe some other good ideas will come from this too. That's all I have. I've got two plans. And, uh, first of all, I can say 29 plus years of my life being here, <coughs> give or take a couple. I remember uh, my parents owning a boat underneath here. At the time, it was 101. Uh, so I remember this area right, quite frequently. Uh, I have two plans here because I wasn't sure if we are keeping this location here, if this is ours, or if it, we just have the Reddit area. Actually, the the area that you were pointing to is ours also. Mm -hmm. The only area that's not ours is the area right in the middle of the aerial where it has the fence around it. Okay, right here? Right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, right. okay. So with that, I have two separate ideas. One, if um, this wasn't ours location here, removing the building here, half of it, this area here, doing a double boat ramp, having a bathhouse completed where the, uh, I guess this, this retail sales is now, using parking um, around the side, using a picnic area, and uh, building a pier uh, for fishing or for observation at the very end of the property, knowing that it's very tight in here. I don't remember the exact going around the corner there to go head out, how much feet we'd have. 
if we have any clearance. Uh, the other ideas I had, if, since we did have that property and not knowing again that the uh, one gated area, if you're looking at uh, having the money, keeping and, and fixing up that area for the boats that are there, because I know here in Jacksonville, we are limited to the, the size <coughs> of boats that are recently located there for them to store their boat anywhere. So we have some revenue there, keep the building, renovate it a little bit, have rental, uh, kayaks, uh, paddle boards, such, any type of equipment of sales, keeping the boat storage area for parking, um, and again, doing a double boat ramp with a kayak ramp on both sides, uh, and then a picnic area to the right of it and the, with the bathrooms, bathhouse. Steve? Actually, I have an entire PowerPoint presentation. All right. Great. Yep. Yeah. Do you get the little clicker thing? Yes. However you work there. Yeah. Why don't you come over? Can can he click from anywhere? I think he has to be on this Line side. Right. Is it I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Where do you want me? You can take mine. Somewhere down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You want know, to sit there? That way Whatever you can works. see it on the screen as well there. <laughs> but I'll, I don't want them to think you're suiting badly, <laughs> so I'll, I'll move this down. All right, so I'm guessing that's forward? Mm -hmm. No, sir. Actually, forward is there. And reverse, let me see. Okay. Glenn, we up and running here? What are we pointing at? I think you can just point anywhere. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, there, there you go. go. Just push hard on all the right. right hand side. So we went down Friday, uh, there were several of us, and out of all the pictures I talk, took, I forgot to take one of the front. Mm -hmm. So this is a Google Street View. That's where I stole that one. Which button did we shoot? The one that you can't see. Okay. That one mm -hmm. up there. All right. And what am I aiming at? Not your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Right. So this is under the uh, cover dock. This right. uh, picture is kind of deceiving because it looks really nice. <laughs> Next, please. Oh, there, there we go. go. And this is underneath that looking out. Uh, in shadow, we can't really see some important details, but it'll pop up here in a second. So the, that dock that heads out to that pier is uh, not in the greatest of condition. And this is the widest dock we have. And that goes out to uh, the area. And you see how it's kind of falling apart out there in the middle? I was not brave enough to go all the way out there. <laughs> I was standing on one of them. Right? This is uh, underneath the overhang, and it's just in terrible, terrible condition. That's another shot of the same thing. Uh, the seawall is deteriorating very badly. Here's another shot of the seawall. Uh, here's the boat ramp that's there. It's a big enough for a single vehicle. Uh, not grooved, so it may present problems uh, when you're trying to haul a big boat out of there. Unlike uh, if we go to, that's the backside, where you go into the parking area. And here we have... Behind that fence, this is what we see, a uh, parking area. And this was uh, a garage, is that what you would call it? Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's been taken down because uh, I guess it had some structural problems. Oh, no, I said, we'll explain that in a minute. Oh, okay. Although it has some nice looking garage doors. So I think there's a market for those. Oh, let me go back. Uh, this is the outside wall of this workshop space. So it's fairly good sized. Uh, I'm not sure of how much electrical current is in there. I didn't see an air compressor. That's the kind of thing you need for a shop. This is a storage room on the inside. Looks pretty rough. Uh, that was the main office, just a partition wall, not much in there. This is the main, what I'd have to call the retail area. Uh, very nondescript. Here is one of the two bathrooms, which are very, very small. Uh, here is a picture of our leaking roof, and another picture of the leaking roof. All right. So here are the challenges that I think we face if we want to make this into a boating facility. So it's about 20 nautical miles from the intercoastal waterway, where all the traffic runs. That, at a you know, for a recreational trawler running at eight knots. That's a two and a half hour one-way trip. Uh, that's a long way. 
The facility has no sewage pump out. And there's no fuel. It's not in close proximity to any restaurants or bars. It's not in close proximity to shopping for provisions. It's not in close proximity to lodging. Yeah, and there are two other marinas in close proximity, a uh, tide line and the one there by Marina Cafe. And if you're coming up to Intercoastal, you'll pass seven other uh, marinas before you get there. So as far as a marina, other than the fact that it sits on the water, it's really not that great a location. All right, uh, it's not exactly big. It's only 0 0.91 acres. Uh, the building is approximately 5,000 square feet. I got that off the city's website. Uh, I don't know if that included the part we demolished or not. Uh, built in 1965. It's almost as old as Mr. Wheeler over there. Uh, <laughs> Within two years. In a minute, you're going to be wearing this hat. <laughs> uh, it, it's basic concrete block construction. It's nothing there is ADA compliant. Uh, there's no fire sprinkling system, there's a very small parking lot, there's a single boat ramp, which in my opinion has been made redundant by the terrific boat ramp we put up at Jacksonville Landing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the entire facility is in the floodplain. So, I got this from your website also. There are all kinds of great information. There is. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So, I mean, it, so if we build, we're going to have to conform with, yeah, we have to put it up, which is going to raise the price. Uh, so the seawall, extremely poor condition. The docks and the piers are in such poor condition, they're dangerous. Uh, the boarding piers, which are those, I guess that's what they're called. I'm not a big boating guy. But the ones you walk down to get to the boats, they are not ADA compliant. So the ADA recommends 60 inches minimum, and those things are like 18 to 24 inches, because I was running around with a tape measure out there. <laughs> so you can't really walk out to your boat with a cooler safely on that thing. Uh, and the roof leaks. So, those are some challenges there. All right, this is a big one for me. We should not, as the city, be competing against the private businesses. So, we have an advantage. We don't have to make a profit. Uh, we don't have to pay property tax on the facility, and then, you know, we're bankrolled by the taxpayers. So, the poor guys up the road and down the road, they actually have to make money. Uh, and then, when we purchased it, we taking that off the tax roll. So there's a little bit less money available for us. Uh, so we discussed what if we make an aquatics facility, or kayaks, canoes, stand-up paddle boards, uh, paddle boats, all that kind of stuff, swimming. So my big question with that is, we're kind of tight on labor cost already. So if we do this, we're going to have to hire a bunch of people. And if we got swimming, we'll have the liability for that. We'll have to hire lifeguards, the whole nine yards. Not to mention that there's alligators in the water around here. <laughs> Makes it fun. It does? Yeah. <laughs> they just eat dogs. All right. So we're still going to have to modernize that thing and update it. And there's many things out there that we have yet to complete. So I recall hearing that there were going to be kayak and canoe launches at Northeast Creek after they did the boat ramp and at Jacksonville Landing, N neither of which are there. Uh, the Seawall at Northeast Creek still needs repair, so that didn't happen. We were going to remove the uh, seawall at Phillips Park, and it's been partially removed, so I'm not really sure the status of that. We were supposed to get rubber playground surfaces, and I believe that was supposed to be com complete by now, which we still got to do that. Uh, we got a bunch of playground renovations we still need to do. The boardwalk at Northeast Creek needs repair. We have property in Carolina Forest and Williams Bank. Williamsburg Plantation we need to develop. And if I was one of the people that live up there, I'd be hopping mad that we haven't done anything up there. All right. This is from our... Uh, refresh from memory. What did we pay? Master plan. Yeah, the master plan. So we asked the people what they wanted, and there's a big old list of stuff, you know, in numerical order, and having a marina is not on there at all. Uh, so here's my recommendation. You may or may not agree, but I think we demolished the entire thing. So as it stands right now, it's an unacceptable liability. We rezone it to RMF HD, so I had to look that up, but that's high density, build condos there, nice condos, waterfront access, right? And currently it's zoned as a RD3, RD3, which is a residential thing. So I don't know how they had it. 
And then after that, we sell it. Any questions? Got some good ideas, Steve. Mm. Like you're speechless, huh? Oh, we'll come back and discuss all of them. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tom. Well, uh, I approach this from a different tack because uh, rather than me providing all the brain or limited brain power, I took it to my eighth grade social <laughs> studies class. <laughs> all right. Since I have a student who lives in that area and uh, they like to be involved and I wanted to introduce them the concept of brainstorming and so we brainstormed some ideas and I've got the handout in front of you now. Um, if you didn't get one, I think there's some extra ones over there somewhere, whatever. But the interesting thing to note about what they came up with were, number one, some of the same ideas that you came up with, and two, that in the concept of brainstorming, we're not really judgmental about what they say, and so sometimes their ideas feed into other ideas, and so sometimes they can be kind of crazy or ridiculous, like they did come up with Jim's zip line, but they added the shark coming out of the middle of the water <laughs> as an added attraction. But um, I, I think that at bare minimum, if we do nothing with this property other than tear it down until we can decide what to do with, I think we've made the place, the whole area, better looking. Um, after looking at the pictures, I tend to believe that there's very little that we can reuse and we might be throwing good money after bad but um, as I told somebody earlier I said it's real estate and in the words of one of my friends they ain't making any more <laughs> so we have it and we have control over what goes there and we have an investment already in that area a rather sizable investment that we could actually decide what happens in that area and that uh, that, that's something you don't get a lot of opportunity for. Um, somebody else could own that piece of land and be coming to us on the planning board and saying, we'd like to put this here and we've got the right to do it and we want to do it. And it could be entirely out of character for the neighborhood and we'd be fighting with them. And yes, I know it costs a little bit of money, but the headache may be more of a headache than what it would be now. So um, you can look at my list that the kids came up with. You can throw out some of the things that probably don't make any sense to you. Um, all I can say is they came up with some real, they came up with some good ones and some of them were actually reusing what we have now and, and after seeing what we've got and knowing what you've got, we can, we, we certainly could go back and narrow this pair, this list down. Typically what you do with a list like this is you start grouping things and throwing out things that are just not feasible. But you try not to do that while they're coming up with ideas because it tends to inhibit their, their thinking. They, they go, well, they shot me down three times, so why should I bring up something else? But as you can, if you watch the progression, you'll see that when someone came up with something, it made somebody else think, oh, well, what about this? What about this? And uh, it's real hard not to sit on somebody's idea and say that's a good idea or a bad idea. So um, it was an interesting experiment, and uh, we'll do it again. And... I've got my list in front of you, and you can go with it. Thank you. I love some of them. Some of them are great. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to thank Susan for getting us together and actually going out there and looking at the place, because I, I had been out there one time before and just saw the front of it and looking around. I tend to, to agree with Lori and, and uh, Steve. Uh, that, that property, I think, cost $450,000. And, of course, this waterfront property is pristine. Uh, I would, I, I, I like the idea of the, uh, the canoes, uh, kayak. Uh, I'd make sure if I built anything out there that was big, I'd make sure that those residents were notified ahead of time and say, Hey, look, folks, this is what's coming. What do you think? Because you've got a lot of people. You're not talking about just an average. We've got an average neighborhood, and you've got a lot of kids, and you, the standard things, the picnic tables, the grills, the restrooms, and the play toys and for kids to play. Uh, it's a different area, and I think should be treated as such. Uh, I would, I would, again, I would do minimal. I know the place as it is now is an eyesore. It detracts. I think that's obvious. 
the boat slips I think are great. I wouldn't want to bother. I would want to improve that for the folks that already have their boats up there and look after them, of course. Uh, and uh, I'd put some grills up there, picnic tables, uh, make it look nice. Uh, I think it'd be at a minimal cost of what we're talking about for some of the other area of other projects. But uh, that's all if you start. The, the environmental thing, I think, should be <laughs> question. If you do an Im uh, impact study, you don't know what you're going to find in that water. <laughs> and we've already been bit one time with the amphitheater. We were going to have a nice thing, and there's an impact about the dirt underneath. And now we're talking about well, what's underneath that water, and who's going to have to pay for that? Well, you have to scrub it, or taxpayers going to have to pay for that, and you don't know what you're going to find under that water. You just don't know. Uh, so I've got more of a conservative view of it. I think Steve Scott has obviously has done a lot more research, and I certainly understand where he's coming from. And if you're going to do it, I, I just say the minimal uh, until we get somebody's got some fantastic idea, minimal cost, uh, and just make sure that neighborhood knows what we're what we're planning on doing or what the city council ultimately uh, what they do with it. Uh, there's a lot of people just put their future out there, uh, and you, you want to be very careful how that's handled. So. I guess that just about winds it up from the, anybody else have anything they'd like to add? Steph? Y'all? I think we, you know, are all appreciative of <clears throat> each and every one of your ideas, thoughts, your drawings, all of that. There's value to everything everyone said tonight, and we appreciate it. As we move forward through the meeting, I think what you'll see is Susan and, and Amanda and myself's ideas and even Dr. Woodruff's ideas about how we feel is best to move forward with this piece of property and where we see it not only today but where it can take us as a city in the next couple of years potentially. I do have a graphic. I think Glenn has it, but I'll also pass it out so each of you can um, have a copy. We'll pass on. First of all, I do appreciate the fact that each of y'all have uh, had the opportunity. I do appreciate the fact that each of y'all had the opportunity. Uh, too many times in our activities with you, uh, we don't really ask you for your advice. We, we encourage you to come every two months and we ask you to give a report, but we don't ask for your advice, and, and we do appreciate that. This is uh, not necessarily to scale, but it's pretty close to scale. And let me walk through some of the concepts. Out on the water side, uh, you know, what Steve showed you is the condition that's there today. And he's right. Uh, the entire thing needs to be taken down. Everything on the water needs to be taken down. A new bulkhead needs to be installed. So if you start with the black line that comes across the bottom, this black line here, that represents a new seawall with a cap. What is there today is literally a series of debris that has been put in there over time to hold back erosion. And that seawall needs to be improved and all that debris needs to be dug out. Behind that, on the land side, uh, I envision having uh, a public walkway roughly 8 to 10 feet wide, probably made out of pressure treated material or out of recycled plastic could be some type of brick pavers because you really don't have wave action per se in there so you don't have to worry about that once you get the once you get the bulkhead put in on the water side uh, the small uh, loading piers need to be eliminated you do not need a loading pier on each side of a vessel what you do need as steve pointed out is a very proper width of a loading pier 
And then what you need are tie-off dolphins on the other side of the boat. So you have a way of securing the boat to four points, but you don't need to be loading on both the right and left-hand side, or I guess we should say port, port and starboard, starboard side <laughs> of, uh, of each of the vessels. So what you will see there are long uh, boarding piers that are intended to actually allow, in some cases, double-stacked parking. The other thing is we are limited as to how far out in the waterway we can go. In meeting with the uh, Coastal Area Management Agency folks and uh, who regulate this, they have said that we can go out as far as the existing T-Dock. Now, let's talk about the T-Dock. Um, I'm very glad to know that none of you took the adventurous uh, action of walking out there on it. Our thought is that it would be completely removed and that all of the uh, boarding piers would be floating piers. They would not be pilings driven in the ground. You would have basically pilings of certain points that secure the floating piers so that as the water goes up or down, the whole thing floats up or down. Out at the uh, pier itself or out at the shelter over the water, uh, we see that being uh, an actual point where people could come and load and unload or have benches and or have benches around that uh, covered area so that you could sit out there and not fish, but sit out there and eat a sandwich, read a book, enjoy being out there in, in the water. The area that's currently covered dock, all of that would go. All of the docks, whatever we do in the way of docks, would be open air. The last time I looked, boats are designed to get wet, both from the bottom and from the top. We don't want them sinking, obviously, but uh, there's really no need to go to the expense plus the fact that the covered dock blocks part of the visibility. It blocks part of the reason why the council bought the property, and that is to open it up for pe so people could have, you know, waterfront uh, activities. On the, uh, you'll also notice that on the left-hand side, as you look at the graphic, on the left-hand side, you will notice some things like P slash O and T. There is no pump out facility this far, this far up in the bay. And in our discussions with the people who currently lease space from us and from others, they have said, we need a pump out. Well, in talking to CAMA, we can get a $20,000 grant to cover the cost. And that's what their estimate is, $20,000 to put in the pump out facility. We can charge a nominal fee. Purpose of the pump out is not to make money. It's to keep the water clean because we do know that uh, not everyone does what they should do where they should be doing it. You can kind of read between the lines there on that, Lauren, okay? I understand. Understood. <laughs> the other thing is by uh, setting up a couple of transient slips, we can then begin to qualify for additional Coastal Area Management Act grants. And we've identified already $200,000 of non-matching grants that we can use for the facility, $200,000. So that's $200,000 plus 20 more thousand. So we're roughly $220,000. But they are restricted to these transit? That, that is, okay. all of that money is restricted from the bulkhead out. Out, okay. So all of the <clears throat> seawall, mm -hmm. and I will also say to you, we've not done an opinion of probable cost, so I'm not saying we have a balance sheet yet. Right. I'm just saying, here are some ideas. Yes. On the land side, we have, uh, we have short-term and long-term ideas. You saw the fact that uh, some of the building is being torn down right now. Mm -hmm. The building itself, when you, when you look at it, as Steve did a great job with his pictures, there is a concrete building and then there's a wood frame building. The wood frame building was really not in very good shape. The concrete block building is in reasonable shape. I'm not saying good shape, I'm saying reasonable shape. So in the short term, what we've already begun to do with city employees when we have uh, time is to dismantle the three bays where that you saw the skeleton of the two by fours left. That will all be down hopefully within the next month. Unfortunately, we do have our regular day jobs we're supposed to do, so uh, that is, is uh, taking a little while. On the other two components, Susan has already, uh, begin, has already begun to talk with a person 
who would be interested in bringing in a kayak and canoe rental facility so that we could, at no expense to the city, have someone there as a private business who is, in fact, renting. Now, whether that's going to work or not, we don't know. The bathrooms are in less than deplorable shape. If there's anything worse than, than deplorable, those bathrooms <laughs> are, bad. They are terrible. But we're going to have to address some of those things. Uh, we do not envision in the short term having heating and air conditioning in the space. And obviously, uh, while council hasn't blessed any of this, our thought might be that in the uh, area that was the retail sale, that we go ahead and open that up by taking out the glass, taking out the doors, taking down the drop ceiling, and simply open that up on the short term as a picnic shelter where you could at least come in and you could have uh, sheltered activities. Exactly how that would work, I think it has a concept we're going to work on. On the long term, though, I agree it needs to be, if you pardon the expression, nuked. It just needs to come completely out. And then what you would have is a lot of open space. You can see on the drawing a couple of uh, picnic shelters. You can see parking. Parking can be configured any number of ways. This is just one concept. One thing that we've thought about is maybe even bringing a nautical uh, style splash pad and putting it there too. Now, we are talking here just concepts. And then the other thing that we would do is look at the playground that's there today and simply reconfigure that where it becomes larger and put in a rubberized surface, which is one of the things we've been trying to get to all of our parks. And we'd actually close the road through there. We would design it, though, so that for emergency equipment, if the road going into any of the park that's beyond you know, where the subdivision is, where you would at least be able to bring an emergency vehicle through this park to get there. Now, all of those are concepts, but the other side of it is uh, how are we going to pay for it? There are three very good grant opportunities that we've explored. One is the 20,000 pump out. One is the 200,000 camera. Neither one of those require a match. You will recall that for Phillips Park, we got a $500,000 grant from Pardav. That was a 50-50 grant. Unfortunately, because as someone said, we had uh, uh, issues on that property, we had to turn that grant back in. Susan and Michael have met with the PARDAP representative, and they believe that we would stand a very good chance to get a $350,000 grant from them. That is a matching grant. The good news is the CAMA 200,000 is eligible to match the PARDAP. Now, why is that? Normally, state grants can't match state grants. It's because the funding source for CAMA is not tax money. It is motor fuel, boating, fishing rods, that type. So it is exempt and is allowed to be matching money. So at the end of the day, you know, if you were able to get a $350,000 grant, 200000 and another twenty. My simple math says the city would have to come up with about $130,000 to result in about $700,000 worth of improvements. Now, it doesn't mean that council is going to approve those grants. In order to file any grant, council has to approve it. But, you know, the, the important thing is that we are all in agreement. What we bought needs to be completely redeveloped. And I think you all have some great ideas. I'm not so sure because I would have to say to you again, because of, uh, of uh, alligators in the area, I'm not so sure I can warm up to the concept of swimming. Although it did say in, uh, in Homer's group in here, it said, uh, let's see, where? Thrill ride? Yeah, but thrill ride. The, the, yeah, thrill ride. That was the one. <laughs> uh, thrill ride. I'm not sure. Thank you, Max. But. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, those are some concepts. Uh, you know, the other thing that it does do is in your master plan, it talked about tying the Riverwalk Park, Willingham Park, Kerr Street Park, and Sturgeon City all together. And you can tie them together without developing this property. I mean, I, I'll tell you that. 
But on the other hand, if you are going to develop this property, it would help, you know, tie that all together. But um, with that, Mr. Willingham, do you have some thoughts? Well, just um, thank you all for your advice and, and counsel um, regarding the Morena. Um, we heard some development ideas and heard some ideas in opposition to uh, development. Um, but it's good. It's all good. It's a, for me, it's a snapshot. It's a before and after. Um, when we took on Riverwalk Crossing, um, if you saw the before of um, the railroad tracks and the um, dilapidated warehouses, you would not have felt there was very much promise to that area. And I think the, um, the city um, has performed and presented that area admirably. Um, some of the discussion in opposition, uh, we considered those things. We considered those things when we made the decision to move forward. Um, we knew the state of the building. But um, I'm optimistic um, as far as selling it. Um, that's certainly not anything that I would be in favor of after that acquisition. Um, and I think we did a, got a good deal on it. But bear in mind that when we have opportunities to um, fulfill our recreation obligation and sell property, we've done that, um, for example, in, in Jacksonville Commons, if it, if it makes sense to do that, which can fund more, more facilities. But um, I'm really optimistic about this, and this is a good before, and uh, uh, hopefully everybody can be optimistic at some point, and um, we'll see what happens in the after. But thank you for your contribution in our getting there, and we're going to consider your suggestions and um, thank staff for the good job that they've done, even with their preliminary presentations to us um, before we acquired the property. Thank you. One, one question was about the existing fishing pier or crabbing pier. Uh, we do have in the capital improvement program money to extend that pier, this is the pier here, extend it further back this way. We did ask the, um, the coastal area management folks, could we extend it out? And they said no, that because of the narrowness of the channel there, that they would allow us to run it generally parallel to the shore and expand it. And I believe that that is in the uh, capital improvement program about three years out. Mm -hmm. So now let me uh, suggest this. I think it's important for the city council to hear all of your input. You know, it's, we're, we're as a staff, it's not we give advice to council, but you give advice to council. You are their advisors, not our advisors. I will encourage each council member to view this meeting. I know they're all sitting home right now watching this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, those who do have other assignments tonight, like cutting the grass in the dark or you know, something like that, uh, I will encourage them all to, to see this. Because your input, whether it's Steve's input about tear it down and sell it for tax reasons, and I, I value those inputs, or whether it's inputs of putting in a zip line and you know setting up a, a thrill ride or whatever you call it, Homer, uh, those are all good inputs, and it's important for, for council to hear that. Now, I think there were a couple of other questions that also came <coughs> up, but rather than get sidelined on those other questions, uh, I, I think it's appropriate, Mr. Chairman, to, to see if anyone has any other comments oh, yeah. that they might have relative to what they've seen with the various options. Right. Anybody have anything idea? Yeah. Just the, the idea about the uh, swimming area, uh, I think there's a list of what the public wants in terms of recreational activities in the city. And some type of a swimming venue was number two. Well, put a, a swimming pool in is extremely expensive. Uh, I hate to say this is a cheap answer to that, but that's exactly what it would be. If we could put in a swimming area, uh, as I proposed down here, it would take some prep work, but it'd be a heck of a lot cheaper than, than putting in a swimming pool out there. So that was somewhat alligators aside. <laughs> Richard, alligators will run from people swimming out there. They only eat dogs. <laughs> See, along your line, uh, 
I haven't been to New River in many years, but their marina had a swimming area. It does, still does. And, yeah, okay. And then if you go up Southwest Creek, there are some huge gators up there. They stay up there. I said it's got They stay up there. Yeah, right. like you said, they stay up there. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, you know, both of them have areas. Yeah. But that, it's a, such a narrow channel there, especially when you cur cut across with a boat. I wouldn't want my kids swimming out there. You mean out here? Yeah. It'd be a roped off area. Yeah, you probably right. wouldn't go out more than 50 feet. I've got to live right. a little very adventurous. Right. I would not very let my child it, it wouldn't go any further <laughs> right. probably than two things. As right a there. parent, yeah. I would not let my child go out there and swim. And, and she, I, like I said, I was five years old and I jumped off the pier out there and crab and everything. So I'm well aware of the water. Richard, you said that uh, our restriction for anything is nowhere beyond that, the, 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 the current outer limit of the that. The current outer body. limit of that, correct. Is where we are. For anything. For anything. And right. that's probably what, 30 feet, 25? Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, that's probably closer to feet? about 70, oh, 80 from, feet. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yes, pretty good yeah. Out there. From, the, from the bulkhead there. Any consideration of selling fuel also, in addition to the pump out? Uh, we did not for two reasons. Number one is simply the liability, but number two, there is a facility just, just, up, just the, up the road, up the road there. The other downside yeah. And, you know, I, I will tell you that, um, you know, because of the pollution issues, that's just something that very, it would not be something that I think city council should get into because of the, of the liability in the water. Has there been any feedback from uh, the residents that live either across or over here in that one subdivision close to the water? Actually, we have not. Uh, at this point, we are only gathering information, and I think it's a very good idea that you have, Laurie, for us to have a meeting with the neighbors at a point in time to get their input also. Because we certainly, I mean, it's a, it's a residential neighborhood, whether it's a neighborhood uh, where the homes have been there for 40 years or whether it's a right. neighborhood that brand new construction, you need to always, you know, get <coughs> into the neighbors and, and understand what they want. So we will certainly take the steps um, and, and get that input. I strongly agree with that. I, I think that's it's very, very important. These, I mean, You've got people that have been there a long, long time, and you've got other people that's been there, and they put an awful lot of money down there. And they, uh, regardless, people need to, if you've got something going up, people need to be notified. At least keep them informed. And keep them informed yeah. if it's good, bad, or indifferent yes, news. Right. They, right. Uh, I mean, you know, that's, that's inexcusable not to let people know. Even if it's a wrong decision, I say, well, we know it's wrong. We're going to build it anyway. At least they know about it. So, yeah, well, we, we will certainly do that. I, I will say to you that uh, several of the residents who live in that area, both waterfront residents and non-waterfront residents, when they uh, heard the rumors, because obviously the newspaper carried some articles before city council made any final decisions, and the contacts that we had were very positive. Uh, one of the one of the problems that we had down there was that uh, the before the city bought it, there was more money made repairing automobiles there than there was repairing boats. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, having an auto repair place down there next to the park and in the housing areas just that wasn't a good idea. But uh, Jim, you mentioned some grants. Uh, almost all those grants were for development. Uh, my only question is, when we purchased this. I doubt if it was budgeted for whatever FY it was bought in. And my question is, how did we pay for this? Did it come out of the fund balance, which is basically our savings account in the city? No, it, it doesn't come out of the fund balance. Uh, as you may recall, the city council probably 15 or 20 years ago set up what they call the council initiative. That's four cents. So out of your tax dollar, uh, there is a certain amount that's available for any expenditure, but there's four cents that's set only for capital projects. So, for example, when we put in the uh, hard, the rubberized surfaces mm -hmm. at the uh, at the uh, playgrounds, or when we do something like this, that comes out of that capital money. It doesn't come out of operating money, so it didn't come out of the fund balance of the city. This is money that can only be spent for this type of thing. And the good news, and, and we will be sharing this with council uh, a week from uh, tomorrow night as we give the pre-budget information, uh, over the next several years, more and more of that money is going to become available. 
right now, and I'm doing this by memory, and Gail made, prom made me promise I don't do anything with finance by memory, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> Roughly a penny of tax generates about $350,000. So if you think of four cents, you know, you're generating, uh, you know, $1.3 million plus or minus. That's how this building that we're in tonight was rehabbed several years ago, and the bond debt for it is about to be paid off. So in the next three years, I believe it is, as we'll show counsel, like I said, a week from tomorrow night, that in the relatively near future, we're going to have somewhere around $700,000 a year that we can invest. And I will say to you that my recommendation as the manager is gonna be, it needs to be invested in quality of life things and quality of life in many cases is spelled P-A-R-K-S. So a lot of the problems that we have, it's just like when we look at the capital improvement program for this coming year. The bathrooms at Northeast Creek are just a little bit better than the bathrooms here at this marina. <laughs> and, we, yeah, and we need to tear those down and we need to start improving Northeast Creek. So, other questions or thoughts about the marina? Anything else? Okay, we shall go down to planning advisory board. Oh, excuse me. Well, before you, before you do Clear. that, let okay. me mention I'd like to get your feedback. Uh, to me, these are the type of things that as an advisory board, we need to have you involved in. The question is, did you enjoy doing this? I mean, Steve obviously became a professional cameraman. <laughs> for he did an excellent but, job. Uh, and he did. But are these the type of things that you would like to be more and more involved in before the decisions are made? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think that there's not really any purpose, big purpose, unless we advise before you do something, after you do it, and we don't have any say it in the recommendation, what are we doing here, you know? I, w I would only add that, uh, like Homer's class from the group, you know, may come a, a few good ideas that would mm -hmm. certainly be beneficial to, uh, to whatever we're considering. So. Okay, now here's your next assignment. Then. <laughs> well, we'll get to it. Okay. Jacksonville Landing has a pad out there, a pad ready for a welcome center. You may not have realized that, but, you know, at the far end up near the, uh, the uh, convenience store, there is a facility. Uh, there's a pad that was designed for a welcome center. In the next uh, week or so, we will forward to you some aerials, and we're going to ask you to go around and visit welcome centers or something that is kind of like a welcome center and come back with some ideas two months from now on what you would like to see that as far as a theme. Also, what type of components would you put in it? So we'll give you some written instructions. Uh, yes, Homer, you could set up a zip line from there all the way down to the river. Uh, We're already thinking of something. Already? Okay. But if, if, that's the, if this is the type of thing that you feel you would like to do more of, we're going to have those opportunities. So we will get you more information on that. If, if I could piggyback on what, what you, we've said about the projects and things that we do as research, I would just caution you to don't get so married to what ideas that we come up with that you get bent out of shape right. if city council decides to go another direction because right. having been a city councilman and having been here i know that they ran for that position and they have a great responsibility and sometimes we can give our best ideas and they'll have a different idea that they feel they need to do and you can't take it personal it's not something against what you're doing it's right. just you know it's yeah. a way that things have to go and so, it works so and don't let it hold you back from the next time because sometimes you'll come up with an idea and they'll do something different and you may say well i'm not going to come up with an idea anymore don't do that just keep coming up and sooner or later you may have exactly what you came up with will end up coming out uh, in public is what you do so um i try to remember that when i'm on planning board that when we decide something planning board they have all the rights to take it to city council and city council can take our recommendation 
or they can decide not to. And sometimes when they don't take our recommendation, there may be people who go, well, that's not what we're for, you know, that we're supposed to do. And I'm going like, no, you don't understand. That's exactly the way it's supposed to work. You know, right. so yeah. um, try to remember that the council has a, a different tack on things because, you know, they, they went through a lot of trouble to be on city council. And I appreciate that. Well, I look forward to we'll get some information in your hands shortly and look forward to your input for the next meeting on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. The uh, next thing on the agenda, director's report, new business, old business. Well, I, I can lead that off, and, I, and, and my report tonight will be fairly brief. Uh, our landscaping group is working at public safety. We've been over there for about two, two and a half to three weeks. We will probably be over there for another three weeks. If you've not went by, we're basically finished with what I call the public's view of public safety. As you ride by, you can tell some of the differences we've made. Uh, as you get into the heart of it and some of the parking lots, we're transitioning into those spots. So uh, if you see uh, the vests out there, our, our, our staff, that's that's who we are and that's what we're doing for the next couple of weeks. I think it looks really good. Uh, we were able to use a lot of the materials from the e initial contractor being out there, so trying to save the city money and being as efficient as possible uh, and dress up public safety befitting as to what it should be. So working hard in that area. Let me comment on that. So the, the contractor was required to put in the minimum landscaping and you know, not being uh, critical of anybody, but we did not want to pay the contractor for the ultimate landscaping that we wanted for the building. But you don't build a $30 million building and leave minimal landscaping there. So, you know, we, we intentionally had the contractor finish what he was required to do by code. And from the beginning, it's been our plan then to bring our own crews in where we're buying the material ourselves, we're selecting every tree ourselves, so we know exactly what's going in the ground. And that's why the double effort, but it will be worth it. There's a lot of value in the long run for us to do some of the installations. We know then if there are concerns moving forward, probably why there are concerns. It's hard sometimes to follow people and then to try and figure out what they've done so there's a there's a valuable cost savings in the big picture to the city for us to do those sorts of things uh, one other quick thing uh, you'll hopefully see us somewhere near, near the end of february when we finish with public safety to begin trimming the trees on western boulevard every other year we do western boulevard and then on the off year we do 17 and 24 but uh, our intentions are to try and get to western uh, by the end of february so you see us out there that's your city at work that's us out there trying to keep the trees and keep the line of sights for our uh, our traffic as they come down the road the last thing i'll tell you i hope you enjoyed your christmas decorations the good news is we got a little more efficient taking them down this year we were able to get them down in six days that's that's a nice move for us uh, generally it has taken us two weeks we implemented some uh, different type of things this year and the way we took them down and approached it a little bit differently than we had in the past so again it only took us six days to get it down and uh, hopefully everybody had a good Christmas uh, Christmas or holiday season let me also give it on, on another project that Michael's folks have just finished as you're going out 24 and you cross the Northeast Creek Bridge you get to a long concrete median just before you get to the main gate and for probably, I think it was like 1990, the DOT planted uh, 70 metal trees. They were about four <laughs> feet tall and about this big around. None of them ever bloomed. <laughs> and we convinced the DOT that that really didn't look like we want the city to look. So we got approval to take those 70 metal trees out and Michael's folks installed how many? Twelve crepe myrtles. Twelve crepe myrtles. Yes. You know, it's it's the little things like that that begin to change a community from looking one way to looking another way. So we're we're real pleased. It's not just the big stuff we try to attack. It's the little stuff also. And Michael's folks are doing a great job. Thank you. We're trying, and uh, 
you know, hopefully, uh, I will make you aware going uh, last week at our uh, council meeting, there were uh, the area of Huff Drive, the area of the parkway, and the area of the, of the interchange uh, was approved, I believe, to move forward to send bids out for those areas to be landscaped. So big value to the city here, and first of all, that this is going to be done with Department of Transportation money, not city funds. Uh, the second thing is it's going to cut down on our mowing efforts. Uh, and the third thing, which is the most obvious, is it's going to beautify those roads more than they are today. We can always do a great job mowing, but we can only make mowing look so good. <laughs> but by adding the landscaping out there and... Uh, it's much easier for us to maintain landscaping than it is than it is for us to mow every week. Okay, and just another comment on that. That's three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars worth of DOT money. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to do the work ourselves. I mean, the, we, we've all heard the the uh, statement: "We've met the enemy, and he is us." <laughs> but when it comes to DOT money, it's always the DOT way. And so, unfortunately, whereas we could have put in a whole lot more landscaping, we're going to get some good landscaping, but that's a project that is going to have to be bid, going to have to pay the, the DOT specs and all of that. So, but at the end of the day, Huff Drive from Western all the way over to Belfort will have landscaping, and Jacksonville Parkway and the intersection or the interchange will have uh, nice landscaping. And we've come up with a central theme so it's not it looks this way over here and looks some way over there it's a it's a central theme of crepe myrtles and understory plants so that wherever you are you will see jacksonville scape or whatever we're going to wind up calling ourselves when we finally get to the point of having a central landscape program yeah and the last thing i'll say something as silly as doing our islands in a way that uh is beneficial to mowing and i think we've showed you or talked to you before about setting them up almost an island on the left side and nothing on the right and then as we go down a little further have a break and then an island on the right side so you know to minimize uh, again getting off the mower uh, so we'll we'll implement these things as we move forward and continue to try and be as efficient as possible when when maintaining these areas so. We look forward to it. Hopefully, uh, we'll have it installed by the end of the summer. Thank you. My turn. Okay. Um, I wanted to just uh, a couple of things to give you an update on. Um, this past Friday, we had inclement weather. Really, we didn't have inclement weather, but that's okay. Um, the schools did close for the day, and I wanted to let everybody know that we worked really closely with media and Glenn, and we got the word out, and Amanda did a good job getting the word out to our patrons. Um, we open up the Recreation Center, Commons Recreation Center, from 7.30 to 6, similar to our teacher work days or any holiday that we're out. Uh, but by 7.30, by 8 o'clock that next morning, even though we got the notice from the schools about 9 p.m., we already had 20 kids. And by 10.30, 11 o'clock, we had 63 registered. So we're real... Um, we're able to provide that service for any parents. When school is closed and the city is open and operating, absolutely we want to provide a safe place for the kids to have a, have a good time, make some friends, work on some ball skills, you name it. But we have staff ready and, and ready to go and, and having that program for the kids. So um, Schools Out is the name of the program. So anytime there's inclement weather, we are able to service. Uh, service them. Uh, the other thing we um, wanted to give you an update on is the splash pad. It was mentioned last time and we're making some progress on that. We anticipate that all of the permits will be done here in the next uh, several weeks. Equipment has been ordered, uh, contracts have all been signed and, and dotted on the line. So <coughs> we hope to break ground um, beginning of March. And so. that's about a $200,000 project that is paid for by Community Development Block Grant funds. So. so we're very excited for that. We think it's going to be a really great amenity for, for the citizens and, and, you know, especially that neighborhood for the summer. So we'll be up and running uh, this summer. And then last but not least, uh, you will probably be hearing about shortly uh, as, um, as the next couple of weeks come up is on February 6th 
is the 75th anniversary for the second division um, um, Marine Corps and there's a large parade going on uh, starting at 10 a.m. that morning it's Saturday morning starting at 10 a.m. at the Freedom Fountain and it's um, all hands on deck as far as uh, the city uh, departments go we're all involved we're excited but they're going to start at the Freedom Fountain and then work go all the way march through New Bridge down New Bridge uh, via railroad and then turn into uh, Riverwalk Crossing Park and then all 5,000 Marines are going to be um, there to receive a, a good lunch, a good meal and their family members and any citizens want to come out and show their support. We'll have live entertainment, activities, uh, food trucks, uh, you name it. It'll be a really nice afternoon to celebrate their 75th anniversary. So you should see more coming out as far as um, letting uh, the citizens know. If you plan on coming, I would get here nice and early and get your spot on the parade route as security will be um, will be in full force. Uh, but there's going to be some neat stuff along the parade route along, as well as at the at the park. So mark your calendars, uh, February 6th. Um, and that's pretty much it for us. Everything else is going good. We're planning spring Easter egg hunts, jamboree, summer programs. We're, we're thinking of hot weather, even though it's not. So that's kind of where we're at. So, yes. With, with the parade, which I have every intention of going to. Great. Because I was in the last big one they had. Oh, good. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, are you going to, like, tell everybody about parking? Absolutely. There is not only going to be parking, but there's also going to be shuttles. So transit's been working. We're, there's going to be three shuttle stops, one in the commons. So you don't even have to park anywhere down here if you don't want to. But one at the Commons, one at New River Shopping Center, and one at the uh, fairgrounds. So there's going to be three shuttle stops, but then there's also going to be parking along, uh, you know, obviously where you can get in the neighborhood. The suggestion would be that you would park maybe on the north end of the parade route, because once the parade starts, yeah, you're, stuck. You're, kind of, you're kind of locked in. But we would encourage everybody to take a shuttle, easy breezy, hop on a nice transit bus, ride it, get dropped off right right here at the parade and ride it back so you don't have to worry about finding a spot and <coughs> walking to it or all that good stuff but you'll find out about um all of the all of the details as as it comes along but the publicity is going to have to roll out very quickly because yeah. that's just a week from this coming yeah. coming yeah. saturday i'm looking forward to actually watching one instead of being in one yeah you can be in this one too no no <laughs> Any questions? Any further questions? Uh, I do, real quick. Okay. Uh, the school program, when do you guys start the school program? The school program yeah, is for the summer, I'm sorry. For the summer, summer, summer program should start that next uh, Monday after school gets out. I want to say school gets out. The registration? 10th registration. Registration is open in March. March, okay. Yeah. For city, city residents and residents. then non city yeah. residents. And then uh, the Jacksonville Cemetery, any update on that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have uh, secured the necessary design for the fence. We've also, literally today, uh, received the quote in for building that. Uh, remember, that is not city money, right. and the city will not actually be awarding the contract. It will be awarded by the uh, executor of that estate. And uh, there is sufficient money there to build a nice wrought iron, and it really will be wrought iron, uh, all the way from basically the uh, Sonic down to the corner of Hargett and all the way down Hargett to the back of the cemetery and then if sufficient funds are left it will go then from the back of the cemetery all the way back into the woods. Mm -hmm. There will be uh, brick components at certain points. So for example the entry and exit, the entry point on Hargett, the exit point on 24 will have very nice brick pilasters at the corner of Hargett and 24. The current uh, uh, sign will be taken down and a very nice new brick uh, design will go in there and then at the points where it begins next to Sonic and the point where it turns down on Hargett to go back it will have a very nice uh, central theme of uh, brick pilasters. There will not be pilasters every 20 feet but only at those points and we hope to actually have the uh, the first uh, um, pilot area uh, installed sometime in March okay. so it's moving on very nicely <clears throat> you will see some trees coming down though 
along 24 and Hargett uh, in order to accommodate those uh, that new fence going in. Okay. okay. <coughs> next on the agenda, council has on report. Um, we had one item on the agenda, and it was a, uh, I think it was in the ETJ. It was a, a church out near Southwest Middle School. Um, it was a quick meeting, lasted about eight minutes, and then we were on our way. <laughs> one of our quicker meetings. That's it. Okay, I'm sorry. Council Willingham, Council is on report. Again, thank you for your input. Sometimes your input is more general. For example, the master plan and the project that we talked about tonight evolved out of the master plan. When we do land acquisition, their um, confidentiality and privacy is required. And so we don't have a lot of meetings or talk publicly in advance about land acquisition. Um, but at this time, when we're talking about development, uh, your, your input can be very specific to the project. So uh, thanks again, but we consider and value your input that went into the master plan, um, as well as these specifics. Thank you. Okay, we have a visitor tonight. Would you like to introduce yourself or um, anything you'd like to? My name's Leah Turner. I'm working on an initiative here in Jacksonville to bring um, the programs and services that YMCA provides to our community. I think it'll be a great benefit because when you couple what Parks and Recs can do and you and you put them together collaboratively with a nonprofit organization, you maximize what the benefits are for the people in the community. And that's what I'm really looking forward to doing, to helping to do here in our community. And I, you know, I, I look forward to working with all of you to kind of, you know, en enhance what's already here because I think it's a great city and my family loves it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank, you. you. Well, Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Member comments. Uh, well, let's do the park reports first. Uh, uh, Wooten Park is fine. Is the water turned off outside, or is it just because it's real cold and the water's froze? Well, I, I would ask you, what day did you go by? <laughs> was it one of the really cold days? Yeah, it was a cold day. I was uh, cold. Too. We tend to work with FMS if the water gets, uh, if the temperature gets very cold, we have to shut the water down so the uh, pipes won't freeze. So. Right. But we'll check. With Good, the excellent park. explanation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the park was fine. Uh, there were some people out there, and uh, they had just finished utilizing the bar, uh, using the trails or whatever, and stopped. And uh, restrooms are fine, very neat. The grills, trash cans, everything was fine. So no problems at all. Excellent shape. Okay, Lori? Um see Richard Ray in comments everything's fine there when I went uh, by a couple weeks ago in yesterday yes yeah yesterday Sunday uh, looked fine Jack and Miette there was a family out there yesterday having a party and I stopped by real quick just to talk to them to see how they like the amenities and they told me they like it much better than Richard Ray because it's less crowded and their kids can run around and play so uh, they thoroughly enjoyed it uh, and basketball nets everything looks great out there Thank you. Thank you, staff. Just curious, did you happen to notice um, the tree line where we had taken there? There was an old dilapid dilapidated uh, chain link fence up, and we've taken a section of that down and cleaned that area up a little bit. If you haven't noticed Check that, that. Mm -hmm. yeah, the area between the park and the uh, and the residential mm -hmm. units that back up to the park, yeah, Michael's guys got in something. there and cut out all the understory stuff and just really left kind of an open forest look. Really well done. Okay. Homer? Uh, first in uh, Phillips Park, it, uh, the couple of times I've been by and, and went out there, I noticed there were teams practicing out there under the lights, which, I mean, it's nice that we have a big, wide open area that people can do whatever sport they want to do and then have access to lights. Um, 
Sherwood Forest was okay, but gosh, it was cold the day I went out there, so I'm not surprised nobody was out there. Um, Branchwood, I'm just curious. Uh, I haven't been out since I made the report on the uh, on the on the on the bridge, the writing on the wood. Do you know if that was taken care of yet? That should have been taken care of. Yeah, so I'll okay. check on that. So my advertisement is is gone, Lauren. Uh, Jim, sure. my, my ad is gone on the board. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, one other, I have another question. Um, in the splash pad, uh, I just thought of this when you were talking about turning the water off. Um, I'm assuming most places that do have a splash pad, pad in the area where it, it water freezes, that they've made some kind of accommodation that those things won't be going off anywhere close to the time because I just get this vision in my mind of splash pad, pad, pad running for a few hours and then all of a sudden overnight it freezes and then now we've got a slip and slide. Yeah, we have ours, <laughs> is that correct? Yeah, ours is actually just going to operate in the seasonal okay. month. Okay. So yeah. from May to, you know, provided we don't have a crazy weather event, we shouldn't have that as an issue. And then we'll clear the pipes for the winter months. Okay. You can come out to the commons and see the ice sculptures on the rocks. Right. On, yes. like. My wife gives me the reports yes. on this. <laughs> Steve? Right, uh, went to Northeast Creek Saturday. There was not a soul there. Uh, <laughs> it was why. cold. It was windy. It was rainy. It was a really nasty day. But uh, when you walk in from Shadow Ridge, there's that railing there. And last month it was all dismantled because they were doing something to that drain. Anyway, it's all back together. So let's back up. Uh, the big slide is still gone. Just to let you know, as we show the makeup. Uh, what's up with the trees when you go down towards the boat ramp? They're on the right side. On the right, right side. side, yeah. That's part of when uh, Duke Energy had to come in. And the right side is the power company's easement. Now, they were kind enough to agree with us, just make an agreement with us that we could choose that area as a disc golf course. Unfortunately, though, some of the trees have grown so high that they're into the... Um, Line. The power line easement. So they had to come in not only and just cut limbs down, but cut trees down. We are working with a contractor now to get the debris out. And actually, uh, I have a conversation with Duke tomorrow to have them move forward and please take that away, the debris away. Yeah, but there's a lot of trees still standing up there with no limbs. It looks terrible. They went. They went crazy cutting trees. Right, right. Well, their rule is, and, and anybody can step in here, is 50 feet mm -hmm. is their um, easement. So if you have a tree that is planted even 100 feet away but has the potential to fall within that easement, they have every right in the world to come in mm -hmm. and cut the tree down. Mm -hmm. Not just trim it. Mm -hmm. Cut it down. Uh, the big pile of wood chips is still there. Uh, if it's if it is what we're doing, I know we we actually have used some of it. Our intentions are to use those wood chips on the walking trail. Yeah, it needs it. There's some pretty yes. squishy parts. Yeah. All right, uh, and then I believe we agreed a couple of years ago when they put the boat ramp in that the gate would be open 24/7 yeah, sure. for the boaters. It should, should be. be New Year's Eve. Actually, it was New Year's Day by the time we drove by. I mean, I don't go out there late at night, but like <laughs> one thirty, two o'clock in the morning, locked up tight as a drum. Hmm. Well, it's not locked. Mm -mm. What it is is shut. See, anybody could, you know, physically walk, get out of their car. Or two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> shut the gate. It's not locked, though. Okay. There's not a padlock on it or anything shut. like that. It's just it shut. had the appearance of being. Sure it does. Yeah, okay. Sure. All right, that's good. Uh, let's see. Kerr Street and Riverwalk in Willingham. Saw so that stuff Friday when I was downtown. Uh, my guys are usually there fishing. They weren't there. The second quadrant has got a, some pretty good bear spots in it. First quadrant pool is great after you got rid of it. Riverwalk? Yeah. 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 yeah, sir. Yeah. On, and the, you know, our focus next year will be to do, hopefully, quadrants two and three. Three, I, I didn't really notice any bear spots in three. You, you will in the summer. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Give me time. All right, that, that, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, Lauren? Uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, Woodlands Park, uh, 
JASA takes care of the soccer fields. Uh, I walk the dog most every morning on the trail. It's fine. Uh, the trail from Highway 17 to the main gate is fine. Uh, again, I, I, I never tire of lauding the parks crew from keeping. I mean, with some of the weather we've had, uh, it adds an additional challenge, and, and they do they do an excellent job with that. Well, I want to piggyback on that a little bit and throw some kudos to our streets department. Kevin Futrell uh, has worked with our staff uh, to cut back the ditches. And, you know, I don't know what kind of instrument they had, but there were some large trees. That, I mean, they were which you know in the summer is going to help a lot for yeah. the appearance, but um, it also helps for sight lines, of course. Yeah. So. Yeah. We, we, we have worked together with them, and, and kudos to the street department yeah. for helping us out with that. So, There are a few places out there where, uh, over the years, growth mm -hmm. has led to some challenging fight lines, I, yes. and I know, I know you understand that. Sure. Uh, and I know they do what they can uh, to deal with that as, as they can. Right. So. And we try and manage that, and we would encourage anyone watching that if they're driving on or riding on the trail and, yeah. and have concerns about the side li sight lines, please call us. We'll go out and look at them. While we're out there every day, sometimes our eyes don't see things the way different sets of eyes do. And there's nothing wrong with calling us and saying, hey, okay. take a look at this. Right. And lastly, uh, Sturgis City looks fine. Uh, I would piggyback on what uh, Jim was talking about the uh, at Jacksonville Landing, where it's as easy for the kayaks to go right down to the boat ramp. At Sturgeon City, that's a yeah. good walk out there to get to where the uh, the the, the lock sites are for that. So that's a cha that can be a challenge as well. But other than that, they they look fine. And, uh, Jim. Yeah, with the Brook Valley uh, last Saturday, not this past, but two weeks ago, and there well, appeared to be three families out there enjoying uh, everything. Uh, it was very clean. All the facilities seemed to uh, be working. I asked Susan, I said, what was the police tape doing around the drinking fountain? She said, was it police tape or caution tape? So I had, you know, visions of the water fountain, you know, involved in some type of crime or something out there. But it was caution tape. Apparently, they're doing some work on the uh, yeah. Pump or one of the bolts had stripped on it, and all we had to do was go back out and replace it. We had to get the bolt and then replace it, which we've done. And I stopped by Northwoods on the wind tonight, uh, about 5:30. Uh, they were wrapping things up. I think there were seven or eight kids left. You know, parents were picking them up the after school program there, and uh, the attendant said there's no problems. Everything went good. Okay. Any comments? Anybody like any comments? I'd just like to thank our... Yes, I would. Good. Good. Yes. Uh, just like to thank our city manager and yes. Mr. Wilhelm, city council, for being here tonight. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. I appreciate yes. it. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Warren? No, I just wanted to pay on the same thing, Bill. I appreciate the, all the input tonight. Uh, it was a good sharing of ideas, and uh, uh, we can go further with that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, there's one one other thing. Any of you who would like to, you know, this is your opportunity to wear the Bear Bryant hat before I return it to the Roll Tide girl at the end of the count. So we pass it around and it looks best now. They said it's Nick Saban. <laughs> well, with that, I'm going to wear it, take it off, and I'm going to pass it off. Congratulations. <laughs> Being new for the business, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Please. We are adjourned. Thank you.